Hello, it's me. I'm working in my studio and I'm working on a hat brim. <coughs> and I'm altering it somewhat. And um, I'm going to show you um, the picture of the original um, pattern and also um, how I altered it. Okay, so this is a Vogue pattern, and this is um, the brim right here. And usually, it doesn't come with the whole brim, like, cut all the way out the long way. Usually, it's um, half a brim, and they usually place it on the fold, and then you will have a long piece once you do that. But Vogue um, has done it this way. What I have done to alter it is that I've added um, about two more inches on the end because I kind of want it to fold over to the other side. Um, I've showed you in some past videos how um, that looks. So if you want to see how that looks, I guess you have to go back and look at some old videos. So um, here's one cut with the um, extra length on it. Um, I used to, like I said, said I take it and put it on a fold and then lay it on the fabric and then cut it when I lay the fabric on a fold. But then I was wondering, and but I usually, I usually cut like a lot of these at once and then iron it down and then cut out the fabric. But, um, I'm trying something different this time, which is, um, uh, it was like this, and I already started cutting, so I can't really show you. So I traced, I took this, so here's another thing for you guys to want to know. If you lay this down on your interfacing or on your fabric or muslin, something that you're practicing with, and if you trace it um, like so, the um, marker would bleed through the fabric, as you see there, and um, you can just trace over top of this, and it'll bleed through um, through that paper because it's so thin, because it's tissue paper. So um, what I did, um, I'm going to try to show you here. Yeah. I traced... Um, Three, it could have been four brims on one sheet on, on, on the interfacing. And then I laid um, two more pieces of interfacing underneath the same sides. So when I cut, I'm going to get nine brims at a time. Okay? So that's what I did with the hat part. Um, I'm using these scissors. I was, you know, I told you I can't use anything with the thumb in because it just kind of hurts that nerve. But here's a pair of scissors I use. You see it's got glue all over it. It's kind of dirty. These are, I use these for paper, but I wouldn't use your good scissors for um, paper or anything because it'll ruin them. But these are already ruined. So what I'm doing right now is cutting out one set and it's going to be a set of three and it'll save you time. Usually the excess um, interfacing, oh, when I put it, I also, when I did it, I did a pin at the two ends and the middle. Okay. So now I'm just going to cut these out. This is the fusible, um, web pellen interfacing because then I'm going to iron it to my fabric and then cut that out and then I'm going to cut the other side out my hats are time consuming they're $75 a piece they really should be more than that but I'll charge $75 because I'm putting the interfacing inside of it um, also um, this interfacing I usually have a basket and I keep all of it because you can use it and cut this out and use it on a piece because cut cut it and use it on um, smaller pieces or use a whole bunch of small pieces to 
cover a big piece. So here's your three pieces here. So I'm going to take the pen out. Hmm. And you have three pieces. Okay. Um, all right. I don't know. Um, I put a video up about the square when I first, about the square market when I first got it and I've had some people ask me some questions. I might try to um, do this video again to specifically for that, but I'm going to try to answer these questions while I'm doing this because my schedule is crazy right now. Okay, so yeah, the square market, um, I love it. I love it. It's just so many ways that you can use it that will help you to maneuver around on the square. Um, there's so many other, um, what do you call it? There are so many other things that I could do to make it easier for me to use a square, but I'm kind of just doing one thing. But they're always updating you about um, what new things they got out with it and how to make it easier for you to use it. The only thing I hate about the square is switching from, I, like if I load up a picture, I have to use, like if I started on my iPad, I also have to use my computer that's in the house to um, finish it. But I really like the square. It's made purchases for my clients and myself a lot easier. So instead of cutting out, okay, I'm off the subject. Instead of cutting out um, one at a time, now I have six here in front of me. You saw me just cut these six. Um, one side is, is fusible where you iron it, and the other side is not. I keep these um, patterns here because I wanted a really small brim. Because the one I used before is a wider brim, but I wanted it to be a little bit more narrow. Just a little bit more. And if I do five eighths on both sides of this, it's going to be a very narrow brim. Very narrow. I'm just going to have to do one to see what happens. But yeah, uh, I do like the square market. The guy that asked me some questions with the t-shirts. Um, if you are going to, I'm sorry, you need to see me. If you are going to... Um, the wind is blowing like crazy out there. If you are going to have different sizes, like when you put up your t-shirt and you have different sizes, you could just say, um, when you put up one size, you can say in the description box that you have small, medium, and large. Or, or in the title, you can put small, medium, and large t-shirts. If you have different colors, unfortunately, you probably want to load up each color. And if you have different styles, you want to load up a picture of every style. But as far as the, um, the sizes are concerned, you wouldn't have to. You can just put that in the description box. Um, but then you have to also think, too, the customer has to have some kind of way of requesting that they want small, medium, and large. Um... The modifiers, and I saw that, but I'm not really sure about what that really means. Um, I have to look into that more. You might have to yourself. I don't know. I I do a lot of one-of-a-kind pieces. So, like, there's a place on there, like, if I only have, say, one pair of earrings like that, you have to click on that box to say that you have one pair of earrings because... Sometimes, if you don't put, click one, it'll stay on multiples, and then that, somebody might buy that one, and you probably can't produce it again, and you're going to either have to give that person their money back or um, try to make that for them. But one thing about the square, when you, um, it gives you seven days 
to confirm that order. And once you see that order and before you confirm it, you'll see if um, <clears throat> you can do another one if you accidentally did not say you only had one. And it has a button up there. It'll say either complete the order or refund the order. And so if you don't think you can get another one of those out to the client, you can just push refund the order. And then you'll also be able to, um, when you refund it, give a reason why when you send that off to the um, customer. And just tell them you made a mistake that you did that. See, what else with the square? Um... I love it. That's all I can say is I love it. I do want to get the square, um, what do you call it? The square little purchase, the little machine, the little drawer. I do want that. And they have one that's cheaper too. I want to get that. I actually have two iPads now. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting that, which is uh, pretty cool. So here we have um, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's, it's nine. It's nine of these. I told you that. So now we have all this left over. And I don't want to throw it out because this interfacing is not cheap. I remember I told you I bought a whole bulk last time. I keep these patterns that I alter and I put it in the same envelope that the um, pattern came in. But I am going to probably do something that's a little bit more organized than that. But right now, I just put it inside of there. I don't own a lot of patterns because, guys, you know I do drape. But um, if you can have it almost done, you need to go ahead and do that, especially if you're as busy as I am. Okay, so I'm not gone anywhere. I'm just over here. Um, I'm going through a lot of changes in my life right now. Um, I do want to read something to you guys. And I know you don't get on here to listen to stuff about the scriptures. But if you're going to be on my, on my channel, you're going to hear some. And if you don't want to hear it, you can turn it right now. Okay, but um, I just want to kind of read this one thing. Okay, yeah. Um, there's a scripture that's in um, it goes to this one, goes to that one, goes to this one, this goes to this one. Oh, it's in Deuteronomy and Deuteronomy 28, 2 through 8. And I'm just going to read this and I'm going to put my name in place of those words and you know if you guys are trying to be successful and trying to run a business it's probably a good idea if you want to try to do it for yourself but I just want to say this to you guys and maybe it might be encouraging to someone um, it says and all these things shall come upon you and overtake you Exantha that's me because you obey the voice of the Lord your God blessed shall you be in your city and blessed shall you be in your country blessed shall you be the in the fruit of your body and, pro and produce that produce of your ground and increase, increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and offspring of your flocks. Bless shall you sh sell your baskets and your need kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, Exantha, and blessed shall I be when I go out. The Lord will cause my enemies to rise again to... to the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against Exantha to be defeated before her face. They shall come out against they shall come out against you one way, Exantha, and flee before you seven other ways. The Lord will command the blessings on my storehouse and in all in which you put your hands to Exantha, and he will bless you in your land. Which, which the Lord your God is giving you. And I'm just saying that to say this. Ladies, we are in business for ourselves. And there's nothing that I can do without God in my life. My increase comes from Him. And 